He's perhaps the most iconic figure in the short history of Israel. David Ben-Gurion, the first Israeli prime minister, is considered the founder of the state. A new archive and visitor center was recently inaugurated in the southern kibbutz of Stable Care, close to his famous home. Ben-Gurion ben was born in 1886 and died in 1973. He served as a top official from 1920. So we are talking about 43 years of public service, first as the head of the general organization of workers in Israel, then as a leader of the Jewish agency, and then as a prime minister. The documents cover not only his work, but also the story of Israel. You can learn a lot about Israel even from his private letters. For example, there is a letter he wrote to his son Amos from 1937. The letter starts with Ben Gurion complaining, why don't you write to me more often, like a good Jewish father? But then he writes the reasons why the Jewish people should accept the recommendations of the Peel commissions from 1936, which recommended partitioning Palestine into two countries, Jewish and Arab. Ben Gurion was in London at that time and participated in the discussion. He supported the Peel commission resolution, although most of the Jews in Palestine opposed it, including his own son. Hundreds of thousands of documents, letters, pictures, and many other items are located here in this archive, many of them presented to the public on the first floor or online. The exhibition showcases some rare items from which we can learn about the history of Ben-Gurion and the Zionist movement. In 1953, Ben-Gurion is Prime Minister and Minister of Defense for five years. He's starting to get tired. In May 1953, he drives to the Ramon crater, and on his way back, he sees the Boker. He stops by and meets the people of Kibbutz de Boker. When he comes back to Tel Aviv, something happens to him. After a week, he writes to the members of the Boker. Dear friends, on the last few days, I read in the newspaper that you celebrated a year since your founding. I was never jealous of anyone or anything, not of property nor status that someone has, although I have many friends with high quality. However, on my visit, I found it hard to resist the feeling of envy. Why couldn't I take part in this enterprise? Ben-Gurion moving to stable care is indeed one of the most surprising chapters in his life. This small kibbutz in the Negev desert, around 50 kilometers from a big city, was established by a group of Israeli soldiers who wanted to pay tribute to Jesse Slade, a Native American soldier who had a vision to create a cowboy ranch in the desert. We're surrounded right now by the first permanent buildings that were uh, built and it, uh, it was very difficult for the people living here. They were doing back-breaking agricultural work in difficult conditions, but the first couple of years uh, they built up uh, speed and eventually became a, a thriving community which we see around us today. The one thing it's important to keep in mind is David Ben Gurion was already 67 years old when he moved here. Again, he joined a group of 20-somethings, uh, so his participation on the kibbutz wasn't really that of uh, an equal. There are pictures of him doing some of the work and those the livestock and I think they mostly uh, did that for show. In 1955 Ben Gurion returned to the Prime Minister's office but continued to spend some time at stable care. It was his home until his death in 1973 where he hosted celebrities, leaders and even common people who used to meet and talk with him. His vision was to make the desert bloom and make it a thriving area in Israel. So that's another question which is very open-ended in their discussions about it. I would say that there was no expiration date on his vision. He didn't say that by the year uh, 2025 we need to have 5 million Jews living in the Negev, which is one thing he did say, that we could have 5 million Jews living in the Negev. Uh, so we're certainly nowhere close to that, but at the same time I see that we've made a leap and strides in developing the Negev as a cultural center, especially around Beersheba, but not only. 
the Negev is 60% of uh, Israel's uh, surface area, but we only have 8% of the population. So we're nowhere close to what he envisioned. Nevertheless, and in his uh, statement of wanting to make the desert bloom, I think we are making it bloom in certain ways. In Israel, in order to be realistic, you must believe in miracles. These words by David Ben-Gurion perhaps capture not only his character, but the vision of people here in the Negev desert.